guys and welcome back. I'm Pearl and today we'll be doing the Arton effect. The Arton effect is very simple to do. Just copy the layer with your photography. Go to Smart Filters. Choose the Gaussian Blur. Set the radius by clicking on the image and dragging your mouse or just here by clicking here or inputting the number here. Let's leave it at 44. And now you just decrease the opacity. You see how more fairy tale fantasy it gets? That's pretty much our Orton effect. Congratulations, now you know. We are pretty much done. This is everything you need. Just copy the layer, add some blur, add the opacity, and that's it. You have your Orton effect. So thanks for tuning in. If you want to have more examples, more in-depth explanations, or eventually see some photographies, how I am doing this, feel free to stay. Okay, so let's back to that. This is pretty much actually it, but at, with this photography, I would add a little bit more. What we can add, we can try and reverse some of this blur and get back the sharpness in the hard edges, like for example, branches, because we don't really want everything to be blurred, we would like this halo effect around everything. So let's go to Live Filters and choose High Pass Filter. Blend Ball let's set to Soft Light. Well this is obviously bad and just let's change the radius. As you can see with 100 pixels we did get a lot of sharpness back. I want actually, for example, that branch and those parts of the trees a lot more sharper. And for example, the water can be blurry because it's natural effect. So this is without the high pass filter. And this is with the high pass filter. This is with the Gaussian blur. This is without the blur. This is enabling blur. And this is enabling the high pass filter. Very subtle changes. But hey, whatever you like, I'm just showing you how we can approach this. The basic you already know how to make the Orton effect. Just bl blur a layer and put it on top. Add some opacity. That's it. Additionally, we can, for example, change those colors for that particular photography. Let's go with the yellows and let's make it a little bit more orange. Okay. No. Exactly. This is what I wanted to hear, to see. Nice, I love orange. Okay guys, this was the example number one, let's move to example number two. So this is something totally different. Let's check it here. Let's copy the layer for backup purposes. Always have a lock on your main layer. And live filters, just add a Gaussian blur. How much of the blur add? Whatever you like, really. The more you add, the delicate and more subtle will be the blur, because it will be a lot bigger. The smaller the blur, the effect should be more intense and you should use less opacity. Let's keep that for example something like that. You can see that on the edges, this is still pretty sharp, but we don't really care because the opacity will be so low it will be not visible anyway. And let's remove the opest. Okay, it's starting to come to life. A little bit more. Okay, maybe this is a bit too much. I would add a little bit more of the glow so we can actually see it. Okay, 50%. Awesome. Look at that. Without. And with. Well, which version do you like? Share, feel free to share in the comment section and let's go with the opacity. Just tell me where to stop. 12%. Barely visible, I would say. Okay, something changes. 25. Yeah, a little bit blurry, I would say. Now we can see a little bit the glowy light on the building and in the highlights here on those trees. 50%. This is currently visible very much. It actually reminds me of my old Helios lens, the Russian lens you can pretty much buy 
really really cheap but unfortunately they are very very old you need to have an adapter for a mount m42 because you can either get try and get it in the camera or you can do it in photoshop or affinity or whatever other software you're using okay so we have this what's bugging me about this photography is this is a little bit dark the bottom this lake and the sky is a lot brighter let's even that out so there will be a little bit more balance let's add shadows and highlights adjustment and remove those highlights a little bit and open up the shadows look at that if we are opening the shadows we are pretty much adding brightness to them adding brightness will also increase the blur because the blur will get brighter so we pretty much have now to decrease the opacity a little bit so the blur will not be that much visible I mean our earth on effect and we have now a little bit of nice view here on the first plan so I like that I would additionally maybe go with HSL adjustment and maybe crush those blues a little bit yeah add this and remove the luminosity a little bit so it will get dark okay I like that and pretty much, guys, that's all you need to know. This is our main Orton Effect Gaussian Blur layer. You can use any blur you want. The effect will be similar. The rules are the same. Okay, so let's go with another example. Okay, so now you can see the example number three. And pretty much it's not glowy at all. It's very, very contrasty because of the strong, harsh light from the LEDs. And pretty much everything is black, so... I would start with actually opening up the shadows, so we'll have a little bit more context of what's happening around. And look, we already added a little bit of glow. But let's try and add the glow around the sign. Life filters, Gaussian blur, and let's pick that radius. Okay, let's keep like that, 38 for example. And let's remove the opacity. Gaussian blur should be inside our image, like that. Okay, this is definitely too much because it's just simply fake. This looks a lot more natural. And the part here is nice and dark. So there we have it. What worries me that actually, by, by definition, the red light spectrum will fall off a lot more rapidly than the white. So I would try and go with the HSL adjustment layer and just simply boost those reds a little bit let's add a little bit of luminosity okay HSV preservation and now it's a little bit more contrasty but it's still very very red okay let's I just zoomed out the situation move to the left, increase a little bit the luminosity, we lost a little bit of the harsh red color which actually makes this a little bit more natural but we do add, did add a nice red glow all around this is of course a lot more visible here and we have a little bit of that here and here okay so this is another example let's copy the background layer let's just add the Gaussian blur effect and let's pick the radius tell me when to stop 3 pixels 5 pixels let's see how it goes with actually for example 10 pixels let's go down with the opacity you see this is a little bit totally different effect it's very harsh I would say this is why Usually you should use at least 20 pixels from my experience. Because then the blur will be more even out across the frame. And now you can see some dark patches, lighter patches. It's just simply not that natural. I just simply don't like the look. This is a lot more even out. A little bit less of opacity. And let's see before and after now this looks a lot better let's now do a macro for that I will remove this layer let we go to the library sorry to the macro 
and we click start recording and let's record the macro so we have our layer selected let's copy this let's add live filter gaussian blur let's set it for instance for 30 pixels as a universal side and let's go with the opacity around 50 so it will be clear visible and nice round numbers so there's that you just simply stop recording add to library orton blur effect and you pick up the category let's go with defaults okay in the library you go to defaults let's remove that this is our original background let's cre click art and blur effect boom and we have it additionally that we added this as a live filter you can simply click double click on the gaussian blur layer and change the radius as much as you want awesome additionally the opacity also as you want you can change easiest macro ever saves a ton of time and that's it it's actually a lot of for a lot more fun to do this because you can create a fairy tale fantasy look to all your images pretty much or eventually if you want to get this retro look of an old camera this is also a way to go let's go through all the images once more and see how it went this is before this is the after this is before this is the after This is before. This is the after. This is before. And this is the after. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you like it, feel free to leave a like. And see you in the next episode. Bye and... Keep creating.